Hello! One of my wonderful viewers, who is a regular commenter as well, has sent me a package all the way from Cleveland, Ohio in the United States and I just can't get over the fact that you sent me something. Thank you so much. I am going to open this on camera today because I am so excited to see what's inside. I've sliced it open and I'm just going to pull everything out that's inside. Oh, there's a letter. There's an Altoids tin which is upside down. Oh, and there's something else. <laughs> Some tape. All right, let's look at everything. All right, very gently the right way. I'm guessing they're not sweets in there. Here we have some beautiful purple washi tape. That's a really nice color. I like that. And it looks like it's nice and thin. That's going to be perfect for sticking down paper. As I've probably mentioned in previous videos, I usually find it difficult to find tape that's plain and doesn't look really distracting on camera. So I think that looks pretty good. That's awesome. And wow. Oh my gosh, these are Princetons. Hang on, let me get this out of the bag. Oh, it's so shiny. <laughs> Princeton Aqua Elite. Finest synthetic Kalinsky watercolor overwash. Half inch, round three, round ten, and a wash three quarter inch. These are beautiful. Do I have an Aqua Elite? Let me just check my collection. It is a Princeton Aqua Elite. I've had this for a little while. It wasn't cheap. It's a Mottler and it is a one and a half inch flat wash. This is so good for doing flat washes. I really love this brush. I haven't used it very much yet, but immediately when I used it, it was fantastic. So I am so excited to get some more of these brushes because I don't have any other ones. I do have a few of the Princeton Neptune brushes and I really love those. Let me just bring some of them out. The Neptune brushes look like that and I've got a few of them. They're fantastic. So I'm really excited to get some more of these. <laughs> that one's like all opaque and beautiful and <laughs> translucent. How lovely is that? This one is the number three round that's a great size i always use round brushes and then the number 10 i love number 10s and we also have oh this is the oval wash oh, i'm thinking why have i got five brushes and then i just remember that that one's mine already <laughs> and these are awesome thank you so much these are so expensive in australia i'm not too sure what they're like in the usa i'm really excited about that now we get into this one i'm just going to clear everything to one side i think and then we can really take a look at what's in here there we go artfully arranged <laughs> all right i'm going to crack this box open we have one that has slightly fallen out there we go it's back in this one looks like it's fallen out too oh dear i think we had a bit of issue during transit but never mind let me gently put that back in as well okay she's written down the names of all of the colors on this letter so i'm just going to have a quick look at it I might put them in order of what they are in the letter which is here and I think that it will be easier because I'm confused. I don't know which one's which just looking at them. I need to spend a bit of time figuring out which one's which. But it looks like we've got three full pans and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight half pans. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, I'll sort them out into order. Okay, I've written them out as they were ordered in the letter and I am really interested in some of these pigments. I am pretty sure that quite a few of them are actually really vintage, such as we've got Malachite Genuine, which has been discontinued. This is Quinacridone Gold Genuine, which you cannot get that anymore. So that is definitely a vintage one. And there are a couple of others. Manganese Blue Genuine. I don't know that Holbein does that one anymore either. So that's really exciting. I do actually own a couple of the colours already. I do own the Fuchsite, the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise and the Rhodonite. Oops, I put the Primatec in the wrong spot, didn't I? Let me just scooch that up there. <laughs> those 6, 9 and 11 are Primatec colours by Daniel Smith and I do own those. But I do not have any of the others. I'm pretty sure I don't have Indian yellow in core, though I do have quite a lot of the core paints. All right, I'm going to just drip a little bit of water onto each one because I think some of them have been sitting in their pans for quite a while because they're looking quite dry. You can spray them, but I find that the spray just goes everywhere, so I prefer to drip water on. <laughs> Look, we've got Cobalt Violet Light and Deep by Da Vinci. I'm sure that 
you know very well how much I have a love-hate relationship with Cobalt Violet. So yes, I'm really interested to see how those ones go. That manganese is really beautiful. All right, I'll just let those sit while I get myself a brush and water. And I'll just swatch them out for a start, just because I'm really curious to see what they look like. Okay, I'm going to use this number three round brush. I thought about using the bigger one, but I think I'll just go for the smaller one because I have not left myself very much space to actually swatch these. Starting out with Indian Yellow, which is a mix of Nickel Azo Yellow and Benzamidazolone Yellow. Say that five times fast. This is a beautifully warm colour, and I remembered with Core Paints that they like to run on water, so that's what I was testing out here. Schmincke's Transparent Yellow is Nickel Azo Yellow PY150. I think this is my favourite yellow pigment of all of them. Now going into this Quinacridone Gold Genuine. This one's so interesting. Apparently Quinacridone Gold was discontinued by the car industry in 2001 and most paint companies stopped using it in about 2005. So this is a pretty vintage pigment. Daniel Smith was the last to have it. Cobalt Violet Light and Cobalt Violet Deep by Da Vinci are using a real traditional PV14, which is Cobalt Violet. They look pretty similar to me. Maybe the deep was just a little bit deeper. Rhodonite Genuine. Now I'm quite sure the color of this is different to the one that I have. I will check that later. Rose Matter Genuine, I think, is another one which Daniel Smith has discontinued and it is a very fugitive color from what I've read. Malachite Genuine, that seems to be discontinued as well. Although I do think it still exists as an oil paint. It's a very delicate green and I think a lot of people were complaining that it was just too light and so they got rid of it. Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, this one's still going and it's a gorgeous color. A very muted turquoise. It does dry really hard though and takes a bit of time to soak. That Manganese Blue Genuine by Holbein is stunning. I wish I could get a tube of it. And Fuchsite Genuine is a lovely sparkly green. Okay, so here they all are when they're dried. Look at the granulation on that manganese blue genuine. It's stunning. Wow, that's so pretty. There's a fair bit on the cobalt violet light and the deep. It seems to be more noticeable in this one. The malachite genuine also has granulation and I think the others are pretty much flat. I think the paper's just gone a bit funny there. I don't know if you could see the shimmer on the Fuchsite Genuine there, but it's a very pretty colour. One of my favourites. So I'm just going to find my Rhodonite so I can compare it. Look, they all fit in this tiny little box. It used to have some other Daniel Smith paints in it, but it does not fit these inside because I've had to sit the pans in the wrong direction and this pan is too big. But it'll do for now until I decide what I'm going to do with them. I found my Rhodonite from Daniel Smith and I'm just going to paint it to make sure it is different because I am sure it is. <laughs> so I've just written it there and I'm just going to paint mine. This has been sitting in a box for quite a long time too as you can see so I probably should wet that as well. But this seems to be much pinker than that. That is much darker. Okay so we're looking at this Rhodonite Genuine here and here is my Rhodonite. Can you see the difference in that? That's crazy. So everything I've read is that Rhodonite changes over time, goes from this pink color to a much deeper red color. So I think that this might be a more vintage pan of it. And I am so interested to see how that has changed over time. So bear that in mind if you're going to buy Rhodonite. I've read it in other places as well that people say it does change color. It's so pretty when it's new, but it then goes into more of a garnet color when it's older. I'm guessing it's older, I don't know. It's very hard to tell from the pan. So leave a comment below and let me know if this is a new tube or an old tube because I'm really interested to see if this paint is much older than the tube that I have, which I bought in 2017 or 18, I think. So thanks for sending me these. I really love the different colors in here. That transparent yellow is so pretty. And the quinacridone gold is a much more ochery color than I was expecting. Possibly the Windsor and Newton is slightly different to the Daniel Smith's one, so I really want to get that as well just to compare them. That would be such a cool video. 
so I'm really excited to have these vintage colors I'm going to do a painting with them because that's the best way to see how they really work and it's such a pretty color palette as well we've got most of the spectrum there which is really nice and I'm going to do some little paintings and just see how they work I ended up doing a couple of paintings and I decided to use those watercolor postcards by Melini. They are 100% cotton hot press and they were really nice to use. My first painting is of two little birds. They are superb fairy wrens and a lot of them live not too far from where I am up in the hills. They are so cute. They are the most adorable little birds. The one I'm painting now is a female and is a fairly drab brown colour but the males on the other hand are an amazing blue and they're so pretty. We saw a pair of them recently just a few days ago actually and it's always a treat when they come out they're just adorable and they flit about and I love them very much especially the male ones they're such a gorgeous blue so I mixed up quite a lot of the paints here to get some of the darker colors and I did use a black from my M. Graham set just because most of the colors in the set that I've been given here are not dark enough to make a really deep black so I just thought I'd use a lamp black for that but otherwise I just stuck to the small palette and I was able to mix up some fairly neutral browns although they did tend towards the more orange side but I still was able to get most of the colors kind of similar to what they actually are. <laughs> the female bird was maybe a little bit oranger than what they are in real life. And then I used some of the turquoises and the Fuchsite green in the background. I decided I was just going to put some of that lovely cobalt violet in there as well because the turquoise is a bit too close to the blue of the male wren. But I think the turquoises and the cobalt violets are such a pretty color combination. You can see in this that the cobalt violet was quite patchy and that's due to its granulation. So it did get a little out of hand, but I started going over the birds again with a second coating because they had started to blend a bit too much into the background. And later on I actually decided to ink the birds a little bit. I was able to make quite a nice neutral gray in this set as well which was good mixing the gold and some of the blue and a little bit of the rhodonite I think it was then I just went over the birds with more colors just to make them brighter really the chest of the male bird is more of an ultramarine but the manganese worked well enough I think and I mixed just a tiny bit of black in to give it a bit of a deeper color and here you can see me just using an ink pen to go around the birds I decided it needed to be sketchy as they just really weren't standing out from the background and I wanted them to so I think it turned out all right A quick signature and here's the first little painting done okay going on to the next one I realized I had not used the tape so I thought I would a little bit for this I decided I didn't want to do a full border but I'm going to do a bit of a sunset and I cut out a semicircle for the Sun I really wanted to use the yellows in this set because they're all so pretty so it's a mix of transparent yellow at the bottom, Indian yellow in the middle, and quinacridone gold at the top. I just was trying to get a bit of a gradient going, so you can see I'm going over it a few times just to get that nice seamless change between the colors. I thought I would lift out some clouds, but this turned out to be a bit of a mistake because the paper went a little patchy as you can see there. So I decided I did not like it and I went over everything again with another layer of all three colors, but you could see how it's left some beautiful patches in that sky and I did actually fix this up a bit later. So what I was doing here was cleaning up my background because I kept painting over the page and then I peeled off the tape. I did rip it a little bit on the right hand side but I managed to stick it down again with some ink and then I'm just blending that Sun in and adding a little bit of a cloud wisp just to make it look a bit more natural 
I then let it dry and used a black ink pen to rule a nice straight line down the bottom and then I colored around the edges of it but I decided I was not going to color the whole thing with the black pen because it would just take forever so I grabbed some India ink in a pot and I painted that onto the ground. This is a sunset in the outback and it is very flat out there I have seen this type of incredibly flat land and it is amazing but I really did just make this up completely and I decided it needed something in the foreground so I drew in some little kangaroos but unfortunately I drew them a little bit tall so I ended up having to make this one quite a lot bigger so its legs weren't so stupidly spindly and then I drew another little one next to it they weren't great and I was just making this up as I went along although I did find a couple of references just to get the shapes right and then I went over it with a liner pen again just to get in the main details although I did have to change some of the lines because it just looked a bit funny and then I just got the black ink and covered it all so you can't see any of my mistakes later Woohoo! <laughs> this was a lot of fun I really loved doing watercolor paintings and then drawing ink silhouettes in the foreground it's so much fun to do if you haven't done this I highly suggest trying it because it's really easy and you don't have to put a lot of detail, it's more just the suggestion of the shape. Then I went over those marks with some quinacridone gold just to make some more interest in the sky and make those lovely sunlit clouds which often you see in the desert. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I used a bit of gold ink as well because it just needed something to reflect that sun off the ground and a little bit on the kangaroos as well. I had so much fun with this. This was such a pleasure to use those paints. That quinacridone gold is stunning and I love how this turned out. All done. I had a lot of fun with these supplies. They were really fun to use. The paints are really lovely. I mean that quinacridone gold is gorgeous as is that transparent yellow. Those two are just so beautiful. And I really enjoyed the entire palette. Got a couple of little paintings on these postcards. So shiny. The postcards actually ended up being really nice as well. These I got in a local shop and I would get them again if I can find them. They're really good. These brushes are beautiful. I really love them and they were a pleasure to work with. I didn't really get to use this one but I did use this one a little bit and obviously I used the flat brush and the little one for the detailed work. So really lovely brushes. I'm so glad to add these into my collection and the paints were great. I was so excited to receive this in the mail. Thank you very much for sending this to me. I'm so grateful. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and give that subscribe button a click because it really helps out my channel and I will see you all again in my next video which will be really soon. I'll swatch you later. Bye!